Welcome to Chasing Hard, the podcast where we talk about things that happen to us in life that we didn't sign up for, that we didn't anticipate, that we didn't envision, things that we were ill-equipped to handle. Today, I am doing solo. I've had a, quite a few guests that I have been super honored to have conversations with who have lived through difficult things and who have come out on the other side, who have found purpose in the pain, who have had a reason to move forward and to allow God to use those things that Satan meant for harm. So I've been thinking along those lines a lot lately, and I have heard all the years that I have been a Christian, of how God will turn the things that Satan meant for harm to our advantage. I've always, always heard and believed that to be about our, our, the circumstances that we are in, the people that we love and know and who are affected by the adverse situations. I don't see it that way anymore. Not. I'm not saying this is gospel truth, but I think it is. I think that the things that we experience in life, that God will turn around for good, isn't just about us or our families or the people that we love who have been affected by the tragedies and the things the adverse things in life that happen that we didn't know were going to happen that took us by surprise. Here's what I think these days, that God does use all things, all things. God never wastes or hurt. Dave Stone used to say, the former senior pastor of Southeast Christian Church, where I worship and where I work, he never wastes or hurt. And I believe that all things will be redeemed. I just don't think they're always made good and redeemed for our sakes. I think there are things that happen that God will use in the lives of other people. Possibly people we will never meet on this side of heaven. I was talking with um, a close friend of one of the victims, the survivors of the victim of the horrific bank shooting in Louisville, Kentucky on April 10th, 2023. I was talking with this person as we attended the funeral of one of those men. She and her husband are very close with this this deceased man and his wife. They've done a lot of life together. And I'd never met her before. You could tell she was shaken. You could tell she had faith. And she trusted God with the life of her best friend and the survivors of this man. And we discussed this God working everything out for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And we agreed that oftentimes the things that happen to us that God uses for good, it's not for our good. It's for the good of someone else. She said that this man who died so senselessly would be the first one to sign up to raise his hand and say, I'll do this thing. If one person comes to know you, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a hard, hard thing. Are we living our lives that way? Do we, are we devoted to the Lord that way? No matter what it looks like, we sign, we are signing up. So even though we don't sign up for these hard things, we are signing up. If we are devoted followers of Christ, 
a few recent situations in my life, which aren't new situations, but situations I've dealt with. And I felt like I had landed in a good spot with recurred. And I'm trying to make sense of it all. I'm not, I'm not at the place where I used to be in the desperation place because I know where my faith is. I know where my hope is. I know where I'm going. I know this is not my forever home. But they still have a tendency to rattle us, to shake us when we don't expect these things to occur. And just thinking about the times of loneliness in my life and the times of craziness, the times of chaos, let me call it chaos, and find myself experiencing maybe just an inkling of that chaotic time because I don't choose to engage in chaotic behaviors. I remove myself from chaotic situations. And sometimes that's just a mentally... That's just mentally and emotionally the removing of myself. It's been a hard fight to get to this place. It's been not a fight. It's been hard work. But it's still, I guess it caught me off guard because I still felt some of the residual effects from that, I guess. And so it left me in a place of wondering. And I think this conversation that I had with this woman at the funeral of someone whose life was taken for reasons we don't even know because because the person who inflicted such harm to five people causing their death and to countless others who have trauma because of this, they're no longer walking on the earth. They can't enlighten us with the reason their reason, which I'm sure was ridiculous and senseless. And perhaps, no, not perhaps, it was due to mental illness. There's got to be some mental disconnect for someone who walks into a room and opens fire on innocent people. There's a disconnect in their brains. That's mental illness that we are refusing to to look at and i i'm not a i don't i don't go public with my political views and i won't do that here but i'm here to make this statement it's not about the guns it's about the person using the gun because there are plenty of responsible men and women who use guns who know how to use guns who have no intention of using a gun against innocent people, but using the gun to protect innocent people. And so all the gun control laws that we put into place are only going to reinforce what we already have going on. The person who has the disconnect in their brain who is going to do harm to other people will find a way to get a gun. And so if you take away guns from innocent people, how can we protect ourselves or others? So there's my gun rant. I think it was with purpose. You think I forgot what I was going to say. I think it was with purpose that I had this conversation. That was, it was a God thing. It was a God ordained thing for me to have this conversation with this woman at this particular time at a funeral of a man who died senselessly and aimlessly and who's leaving a family and a community reeling. Puts things into perspective for me as a whole, but specifically for me. God has not forgotten or forsaken me. He sees me. He knows me. He feels my pain. He's with me in it. And he has a reason. And he will use these things for good. My good, maybe. The good of my family, maybe. But good, nonetheless. Because what Satan means for harm, God always uses for good. Jesus Christ came and died on the cross pour out every single drop of his innocent blood to redeem those things for you and me. 
And then he rose again. He rose again, ensuring that we have the right and privilege to become children of God and live with the Most High God, our fathers, eternally. I don't know what you're experiencing, what you have gone through, where you are in the experiences that you have gone through. Maybe you're waiting for God to take this evil and turn it around for good. I just want to encourage you that maybe this good isn't about you. As hard as that is, because you deserve good. You deserve good things. Really, we live in a broken world, so you don't always get what you deserve. And I'm sorry for that. But take courage. Trust in the Lord your God. Lean not on your own understanding, but on, in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Believe in his word that he will take this situation, all the situations that Satan meant for hard in your life and use them for good, whether for your good or someone else's. Thank you for listening. You know, if you have a situation, if you have questions, I don't have your answers, but I can help you to try to make sense, to try to understand. I can pray for you. If you have questions, prayer needs, whatever, reach out. And I will do my best to help you in your journey because I believe that God has called me to do this thing. Thanks for listening to Chasing Hard. And we will see you next time.